Hey, <clears throat> 11 22, 2016. Okay, up here in Japan earlier, there was a very bad earthquake 7.2, 6.9, and aftershocks. Okay, look at this radar here in Australia. Look at that. Oh. When I back up, you can see it looking like that, and when I get closer, it disappears. Oh, there we go. That's beautiful. Look at that. <laughs> What's it doing? Now, that is not a typical radar pattern. What do you think about that? Australia's national radar loop. It doesn't really show... Um, what we were just looking at, but you can take a look at what the radar covers here, right where right here where it says optimal coverage. These circles show how far the radar extends. Um, what is this here? Where is it? This side, right? Weather zone. And look at this. It absolutely shows up beautifully. Here's a timestamp. You can move it one ahead of time. There we go. Tuesday, 2300. I'm get closer in there. But that's pretty cool looking. Um, of course, that's good news and danger. So I was just going to click out of here, and then I noticed over here on the side, look at this. Thunderstorm asthma, like an elephant had his foot on my chest, Melbourne man says. The Melbourne man says he felt like he had an elephant standing on his chest on Monday night when a thunderstorm asthma prompted thousands of people to seek medical advice. And you can click on each one of these links here. This one, thunderstorm asthma, to die after Melbourne storm causes a spike in respiratory problems. I've never heard of such a thing. Let's find out what it's about. Okay. <clears throat> two people died after experiencing respiratory issues during a thunderstorm asthma emergency. Go down a little farther. Uh, hospitals. Well, I'll, I'll go up here. A severe thunderstorm damaging a number of buildings, felling trees, and spreading pollen. That's what they're blaming it on, spreading pollen. Hospitals were swamped with emergency patients, while firefighters and police were called to help paramedics respond to thousands of calls after the conditions caused breathing problems for Victorians. Ambulance Victoria Emergency Operations General Manager Mike Stevenson said two people have died in Melbourne's western suburbs after reporting respiratory sy symptoms. We do know of those two cases, and there will be other people who died in Victoria yesterday as well. Whether or not they're related to this phenomenon, we don't yet know. We'll have to review each incident, and as I say, the fullness of time will understand whether or not they are related. Okay, they're saying that one of the patients waited at least 30 minutes for an ambulance, and then they're saying that could have contributed to the death. But look at this. There were 2,000 calls to triple O for ambulance between 6 p.m. and 11 p.m., nearly seven times more than usual. We ran out of Ventolin puffers at one point. St. Vincent's Hospital in the inner Melbourne suburb of Fitzroy, was overflowing with emergency patients and ran out of Ventolin puffers. The emergency physicians say not only have they never seen anything like this before, they never have seen so many people arrive at one time all suffering from the same condition, said Kathy, said hospital spokesman, woman, 
Kathy Bowling. We were considering opening a second emergency department. Um, okay. So let's go down here a little farther. The link for this is right below. Um, Asthma Victoria Chief Executive Robert Ald said people allergic to ryegrass were particularly susceptible to thunderstorm asthma. Particularly this season, if you've got allergic allergic reaction, keep your preventer medication and talk to your doctor about the best way to use your medication. Also, if you start to have symptoms, that's where your blue pepper comes into play. Look at this though. More than 400 children were treated at the Royal Children's Hospital, and more than 60 patients were still waiting to be seen at 8.30. The most seriously injured or sickest children are always seen first, so children with less urgent conditions currently face long times to see doctors. Yeah, well, they were packed. That's why. All right, I decided to Google thunderstorm asthma because I've never heard of it before. And actually, this doctor, Dr. McCullough, I really like, um, although he does try to sell products, which you don't have to buy, but he gives a lot of information, and he is more educated than a lot of doctors. Um, he's an osteopath, so he tries to do things healthy. So let's find out what his article says. Okay, so what he's talking about here is a theory. The most prominent hypothesis, which is a guess, explaining associations that are pollen grains rupture. Oh, an ad, hold on. Um, so there's, it's just a guess. But also, um, I've done a lot of different research about different things being sprayed into the air. And I'm not quite sure if I believe this one, but there is some really good information down here further. Um, your mind may trigger asthma symptoms, and the link for this will be below. It's right up here, articles of Macola, so you'll be able to see it easily. Um, so he talks about all these things that can trigger it, but also this is a way to help get rid of asthma. Um, attacks right here and then he talks about a certain type of breathing I, I can't pronounce that so Uteyoko and I'm not going to play the video right now but um, you can link on it and how to breathe correctly during physical exercise um, this is also some really helpful information about exposing babies to all this normal stuff in a house is healthier for them than having everything all clean. And here, like, why does your immune system need dirt to stay healthy? So this is really good information to um, read and, um, like, arm yourself. And then here's, like, his little ad for um, how to get more information from him and... Um, if you subscribe, then you can have access to this library of free ebooks, which is pretty cool. All right. So this is what I'm talking about here. Occasionally, the mil the military will uh, put some substances into the atmosphere that are detected by our radar, our weather surveillance radar. It's a substance that's called chaff. The chaffs do look similar to the oncoming storm system, but they're actually an indication of an aircraft. We replayed the radar images from 8.40 a.m. Turns out several of those chaffs or planes were near the San Diego and Baja areas. Okay, so the link for that will be below. So I just want to say that I am grateful for you, and I am here to serve. I'm like, where is the timestamp on here? So, oh, it's right there. Okay. 
Meow.